CO2 diffusers are super popular for planted tanks because they help your plants thrive. But here's something most people don't realize. This method can actually end up costing you quite a bit of money in the long run, and many hobbyists don't even notice it. If you take a closer look, you'll notice that many CO2 bubbles from your diffuser actually make it all the way to the water's surface and escape from the tank without dissolving. That's a lot of wasted CO2. The most common way to fix this issue is by positioning the CO2 diffuser against the water flow. This helps the bubbles stay in the water longer, giving them more time to dissolve. Even though this technique helps dissolve more CO2, the reality is that most of those bubbles will still escape the tank, leaving you with wasted CO2. Plus, this method creates an unpleasant bubble effect in your tank, which can be distracting and take away from the natural beauty of your aquatic plants. If you're trying to use DIY CO2 with a sugar and yeast mix, things get tricky. The pressure created by that homemade setup just isn't strong enough to push CO2 through the diffuser membrane, which means you'll likely struggle to get any real results. So, today's goal is to design a simple system that can diffuse CO2 efficiently, one that works with low pressure, keeps costs down, and requires absolutely no maintenance. A small pump, a round-shaped bottle, and an airline tube fitting. That's it. All you'll need just these three simple items. It's crucial to get the placement right when inserting the pump's output into the bottle. Mark a spot, keeping some distance from the bottom, and align it to one side. This ensures optimal performance. The easiest way to create the hole is by using a metal tube that matches the pump's output size. Heat up the metal tube, then use it to melt a precise hole in the bottle. Once you've inserted the pump into the bottle, make sure to seal the hole securely with glue. This prevents any air leaks and ensures the system works efficiently. Next, we need a way to inject CO2 into the system. Simply connect the CO2 line close to the pump's intake. This ensures the CO2 is drawn directly into the bottle for efficient diffusion. Now comes the fun part, adding your DIY CO2 reactor to the aquarium. Make sure to remove any regular air bubbles trapped inside the reactor to get the best results for your plants. Next, attach the CO2 line to the pump. After just a few minutes, you'll start to see a beautiful water vortex effect inside the bottle. It's a sign that your CO2 is being efficiently diffused. If you look closely, you'll notice all the CO2 bubbles chopped up by the pump get trapped inside the bottle, constantly mixing with the tank water. This ensures a maximum CO2 diffusion rate. Here's great news for DIY CO2 users. This system can be turned off at night. All the CO2 bubbles produced overnight will get trapped in the upper part of the bottle, ready to be used the next day. However, DIY users should note that you might lose some of the CO2 generated overnight when the system starts up in the morning due to the limited space inside the bottle. And here's an important note for all CO2 users. Since the CO2 gets trapped inside the bottle and keeps mixing with the water, this system doesn't need a high bubble count to raise your tank's CO2 levels effectively. Keep in mind that the ideal CO2 levels can vary from tank to tank. Aim to maintain your CO2 levels above a certain threshold and watch the bottle's opening area. If you see large CO2 bubbles escaping, reduce your bubble count for maximum efficiency. For me, the sweet spot for maximum efficiency is one CO2 bubble every two minutes. I achieve this by using extremely small amounts of yeast in my DIY setup. As a final touch, I insert a sponge into the bottle opening. This will trap some of the bubbles to keep mixing and also prevent snails and shrimp from crawling into the reactor. The only downside I've found is the size and appearance of this setup. CO2 diffusers definitely look sleeker in the tank. However, with some thoughtful planning and proper positioning, you can easily minimize this issue. And when it comes to maintenance, there's almost none. You can keep this system running smoothly as long as your pump is working. Hope this guide helps you set up your own efficient CO2 system for your planted tank. If you enjoyed this video and want more tips and tricks, 
Don't forget to subscribe to the Aquarium Mastery channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.